Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com. Bringing another time video this week, and this week it's actually a remake of a very old video of mine. Uh, I'm doing the 2022 revised edition of the Articulated Helgramite. We have some new materials that have come out since I've tied that that uh, just make it a lot better looking profile and a lot fishier looking profile. So I'm going to go into a little bit of details on some other things after the video is over, but it's kind of a little bit of a long tie so i'm just going to jump right into the tying here and uh, i'll point out a couple things afterwards if you want to stick around for that so here you go the articulated helgramite Okay, you just saw the um, picture of the fly here. I'm going to jump right into tying this. What I'm going to start out with is an 1120 Daiichi hook and uh, size 8 for a trailer hook on it. And then I'm going to put it on a fish, a fish spine in the 10 millimeter size. This is the smallest one in the starter pack or if you do it um, by doing each individual one, it's the 10 millimeter one. And this is going to make the back section of the fly. We're going to use some 140 denier black thread and just wrap that on there and uh, pull that little gap together and make it tight. And then we're going to put on some electric ecstasy in black. And it's like a chenille. There's a cord inside it there that you can see those two strands. We're just going to tie those two strands down, wrap it back there. And then I'm just going to make about, this will take about four wraps or so, and I'll get it right up there to that eye. Once I get it up to that eye, we're just going to tie it off. And then trim off the eggs to see and whip finish this. Now this is our back section. We're going to build three more, two more sections of this. So we're just going to whip finish this. And then we're going to add the next section. The next section is going to be another one of these articulated spines from Fish Skulls. This is the 15 millimeter. And I'm just going to, you see the one side there has a gap with a little hole there. You can peel it open just a little bit so it pops down in. Put that right through the eye and then we're just gonna open our vise up and put that eye in the vise. And we're gonna do the same thing all over again. I don't get real picky whether it's top or bottom. And we're just gonna close that gap again cover it with our thread and put the ecstasy back on again. So what I do a lot of times whenever I'm tying these, I'm usually tying a couple of them. So I'll build the body sections up first on a couple of them. I like to tie in stages. And so I'll build these back three body sections before I, and then I'll do all the heads at one time. So again, we're just going to wrap this forward five or six wraps, however many it takes me to get up to that eye. Nice tight wrap so it makes it full. One more. And once I get up the eye, tie it off again. And I just peel back that eggs to see and make a nice head for a whip finish. You can see this ecstasy gives me a lot fuller body than the polar chenille of the previous version. That's why I switched to this and I like it a lot better. So again, we're gonna add one more section. This time we're adding a 15 millimeter shank. And uh, again, just pop that hole just a little bit. 
that gap, put it in the eye, and then we're going to move it backwards in the vise. Just put that eye in the vise there. And then repeat the process again. Come back in with our ecstasy. Oops, I missed the... There we go. Get that tied down nice, bring my thread back up to the eye. And then wrap the ecstasy forward. And if the last time took six or seven wraps, it's going to take eight or nine probably. Oops. I don't count, I just wrap. And... Now that we got that up there, we can tie it off. I like to put about three good wraps on there, three or four, just to hold that down tight, and then I come back in and whip finish. And just make sure I catch a couple of the threads to make a nice little head there. And that finishes the tail section of this fly. So like I said, I'll do, you know, if I'm tying a dozen of these, I'll do this a dozen times and then I'll go on to the head section. So let's move on to the head by putting the hook in the vise. All right, for the hook, I'm using a fire hole. This is an 839 and it's a size four. It's a nice little hook gap there. That's why I like it. And uh, I'm just going to start my 140 denier thread back on here. Trim it off, and then we are going to put the uh, wire, Senyo Intruder wire on here. This is a larger size. This is some extra, but we sell the black in the shop that's the medium size, and it works great. This is I just ran out and had this laying around my studio here, so I'm using it. But normally I use the black Senyo wire. So we're just going to wrap that down nice on top. Then I'm going to come back with my tail section and I want you see now there's a direction the hook lies I want them both laying the same direction so when I tie this fly it's actually going to be hook point up but when I run the wire through it it's going to make both hook points go the same direction so I'm just going to run my wire through that hole there hold it down on top and just tie this down. Some nice wraps on there. And then tighten that loop up where I want it. I like that actually. And then I take an old pair of scissors and trim these a little bit shorter. Use an old pair of scissors on this wire because you don't want to damage your good ones. And then I just pop each one of them back to tie them down. So it locks them in place. It's not going to pull out or come undone. Get them tied down there nice. And then I'm going to wrap this back and make my nice little loop there to make this piece articulate. So we're just going to cover that all up. Then I'm going to put my dumbbell eyes on. I'm going to bring it up here, and I'm going to go, oh, about an eye length and a half back to put my dumbbell eyes on. And I just sit them on top, and then I make crisscross wraps back and forth. And then after a couple crisscrosses, I'll go underneath it, and I just wrap in all sorts of different directions just to lock that down, get it nice and tight. Um, you can use the yellow ones, the red ones, it doesn't matter here. I'm going to hit them with some black paint when I'm done, just to darken it all up. 
Okay, for just a little bit of extra weight, I'm gonna put some lead on here. You don't have to do this step. It's gonna be easier if I get my thread out of the way to do it. So I'm just gonna whip finish, cut my thread off real quick. And I'm gonna come in with some lead wire. And I'm gonna add some, this is 015. I don't wanna add up too much body, but I do wanna give it a little bit of extra weight. There we go. And then we're gonna come back in with our thread again, and we're gonna lock this down. Like I said, you don't have to do this. It's, I sometimes like to fish some deeper holes and some faster water when I'm smallmouth fishing. And I want it to get down, and, and I don't like putting weight on my line if I don't have to. Now I'm gonna pop that hook back out of the way there. Get my body out of the way. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come back in with that electric ecstasy. And I am going to tie it back on, back at the tail. And tie it back there to where I have that Senyo wire. And then I'm gonna bring it forward about five wraps. All right, once I get it forward about five wraps, I'm gonna tie it off. Okay, now I'm gonna tie it off there. I'm gonna leave it hanging off the top, but it's actually gonna be the bottom. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip my hook upside down. Flip it upside down in your vise. For me, I got a rotary vise so I can do it that way. The next thing I'm gonna add is I used to use foam and now I switch to this is actually uh, like leather. This is suede actually. And I didn't have it in black, I had it in some gray, so I just hit it with a marker. But you can see there, I cut the pinchers out and then I cut the body section out and then a tag to tie it down with. So you want that body section, you, you can see how it fits on here right now. My pinchers are going right over my eye and the body section is the length of what I have left. So if you watch my old video, I showed you how to cut this out and I cut it out of foam. Do the same thing here. Experiment, get your size down. But then you wanna wrap it on top. Wrap that tag end down on top. And just cover it up with your wraps. And now I switched legs on this one and I switched to the uh, round rubber legs medium in black. And I just cut them off, I mean, I'll measure it out real quick, about an inch and a half. Cut them in about an inch and a half to two inch length, you can trim them down later. And I'm gonna, gonna lay them on top, and I'm gonna crisscross pattern them. So there you can see how I laid it down, going out one side, coming out the other. And now I'm gonna do that again with another one going the other direction. Just to make an X on there. And I want them to be as long as I can get them so I can trim them down to the length I want them later. Okay, there you see my crisscross pattern. And then I'm gonna go one right down through the middle to give me a total of six legs. So, now that I got there's six legs on there. We can start making the head on this. There you see my six legs go in all different directions. Now I'm gonna bring my thread up here to the eye. And I'm gonna start with this chenille. Come back with the chenille. And uh, start wrapping it forward again, the ecstasy. I'm gonna wrap it behind the legs one or two turns and then split the legs. Just keep going in between them legs and then behind the head and then I'm going to wrap around the head once and get in between them eyes and then tie it off. 
once I get it up here behind my eye, just going to tie it off and trim. Okay, now I want to make sure I get my legs down out of the way and we're going to pull the head over. So when I'm pull the head over, I'm just going to pull it up towards those eyes and you can see where the pinchers go right in front of those eyes there. We're going to tie it down at that point. I'm going to tie it down right behind them pinchers. There you can see it kind of kick those pinchers up. And once I make a couple wraps over the pinchers, then I'm just going to go right behind the eye and lock her down. Put my whip finish and finish this off. All right, now time for a couple finishing touches on this fly. What I like to do now is I like to put a head on this. I like to harden the back up on it. So I come in with some medium viscosity solar res and just cover this back on here. It's going to make it hard and shiny, kind of like the real insect. And I lock down those threads while I'm at it. And we'll hit it with our light and give that a second to cure. Then the last thing I like to do is take some black nail polish. This is Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. And I like to black out those eyes on the dumbbell eyes and just cover them up good. It seems to hold on here well, this Sally Hansen Hard as Nails. Try to cover up any of the silver I can see and the red there. And then you can see my legs are a hair long. I just like to trim them down a little bit. And there you have it. There's my finished Helgramite. Got tons of articulation, lots of wiggle to it, and uh, a nice thicker body now. It's more, um, it just has a nicer profile to it. So I, I think you're going to like this pattern a lot better. Okay, guys, I really hope you liked that video, the revised edition of the articulated Helgram mate. Um, I just like it a whole lot better because it has a much beefier profile, just like the real insect. Um, you know, if you ever caught one of them, you know how they have that nice, soft, big, meaty back back end to them. And uh, this Ecstasy yarn does a much better job of replicating that. You can use the electric Ecstasy. I like to have a little bit of flash in it. Use the regular black if you like. No problem. Whatever you have, um, use it. Experiment. Have fun with it. You can even try a dark brown or, you know, markering up with dark brown, a, a lighter color because... We don't carry the brown. I'm not sure if there is a brown eggs to see. But uh, play around, have fun. One thing, the fish skulls, the fish spines. If you get the starter pack, the starter pack has all the pieces plus one more for the head in there. And uh, that works great. You only get six of them. The other thing you can do is buy the 10 millimeter, 15 and yeah, 15 and 20 millimeter shanks. And then you get 24 of each. So you have the potential to tie 24 of these flies if you buy each pack individually. But if you're only looking to tie a couple of them, get the starter pack, then you're only, you can tie six of them with the starter pack. And it's a lot cheaper that way. So um, play around dumbbell eyes. Like I said, doesn't matter in the video. It doesn't matter because you're going to black them out. So just get something heavy on there to get your weight down. I like, you don't have to put weight on it if you don't want to. But I like to keep it off my line if possible because a lot of times, you know, I even nymph a lot with my smallmouth fishing. I will, you know, bounce to the bottom just like I do. And a lot of times I'll swing. This is a good swinging fly too. But a lot of articulation and action, this is a killer swinging pattern. So have fun tying, guys. You need any of the materials, like always, find them at our website at wholesingersflyshop.com. I'm going to try to tie some of these and have them for sale on the website and if I don't have any on there at the time or at the time when you're watching this video and you'd like to order some, hit me up at wholesingersflyshop at gmail.com and I'll special, special order some for you. Any of the flies you don't see on the website, like Scott's Big Nymph, which we rarely have in stock, um, 
hit me up at wholesingersflyshop at gmail.com and I can do a special order for you. So thanks for watching, guys. Until I bring you another video, I'm Sean Holsinger.